by Dr. Surekha Ramachandran, President, Down Syndrome Federation of India. I will just give you a brief introduction about uh, Dr. Ramachandran before uh, I hand over the mic to her. Uh, she's, as President of Down Syndrome Federation of India, probably she's not as well known as she is as Rekha Ma. People know her more as Rekha Ma. She is the go-to for anybody and everybody with Down Syndrome. And she is the hope for everybody with Down Syndrome in the country and even abroad. So with these small words of introduction, I, uh, I welcome uh, Rekha Ma'am to deliver the welcome address, please. Thank you, Brinda. Good morning and a very, 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 very warm welcome to this absolutely august gathering of professionals who have come together to celebrate our day. I like to call it my day and I really, really enjoy it when the day, World Down Syndrome Day comes across because it's like the biggest celebration for us. And this year even more because we have got most of the buildings that we have required, we have uh, actually uh, asked for to be lit up that have been lit up. So it is like we're celebrating and we are bringing in Diwali much earlier than we thought we would. So there are firecrackers in my house and uh, we are honestly so happy that we had bubbly in our life because bubbly actually not only comes with extra love, extra care, she comes with the extra chromosome. She has made me what I am today. Bubbly, my child, is my guide, my teacher, and my inspiration. I am privileged to welcome Sri Rajesh Agarwal, secretary, who is such an amazing person that he said whatever I had actually put forward in paper or otherwise and asked or requested of him, he was ready to hear us out. Sir, we welcome you to this meeting today. He is the secretary of the Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disability, and he will be here today for this webinar. This is his brainchild. Thank you for this much needed webinar, sir. The resident coordinator of the United Nations to India, Mr. Sombi Sharp, is here virtually to address the gathering. Thank you, sir, and we will wait to hear your message. We have a very, very special guest who actually is our brand ambassador, and she has carried the torch for us right across the country, Ms. Unati Surana, who will be saying a few words on this occasion. I am also honored to welcome all the specialists from the world of medicine who have held our hand in this journey of raising our children. From genetics, from which we have the world-renowned expert, Dr. Suresh, Dr. Nina Vaidya, who is a mother, a life coach, and a pediatrician, Dr. Smita Mishra, a pediatric cardiologist whose hands are magic, and Dr. Nikun Shah, one of the finest ophthalmologists in the country. We can safely say that all our self-advocates are in absolutely good hands. Last but not the least, I welcome every one of you who has taken the time out to be with us on this August occasion. Welcome everyone. Namaskar. Join in and enjoy hearing out the experts. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rekha ma'am, for that brief yet warm welcome. Uh, sadly, uh, Sri Rajesh Agarwal, sir, was not able to make it today. He did uh, try to come in, but uh, due to some uh, prior commitments, uh, he could not be with us today. Uh, uh, however, a few words about uh, Sri Rajesh Agarwal. He's a technical person, but with a heart of gold. Uh, he has organized for this webinar because he, when we went to him and requested him to organize this, he mentioned that this had to be spread across the country and that's why he uh, instructed RCI to take over the uh, charge of inviting all of you over. So um, and now we move on to the next address, which is, as Rekha Ma'am mentioned, is by Mr. Shombi Sharp. Mr. Shombi Sharp is the resident coordinator of the UN in India. And uh, he was not able. Uh, he was not able to be present because, again, some prior commitments. But he has sent us a virtual message, uh, which we will be playing now. Dear colleagues, United Salam. Nations in India, Te yeah. Orse, Ap Sabiko, Mera Namaskar. It's an honor to speak to you today on the occasion of World Down Syndrome Day. 
on behalf of the UN country team in India and the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. March 21st each year marks the World Down Syndrome Day, established in solidarity with all persons with Down syndrome and their families to raise awareness about challenges faced, drive inclusion, and full human rights. Stating the obvious, Down syndrome has always been a part of the natural human condition, existing in all regions and across all countries in the world. Yet many persons with Down syndrome still face unnecessary barriers to quality education, healthcare, sport, employment, livelihoods, and other opportunities that all people with Down syndrome must have the opportunity to participate on a full and equal basis in society, in all aspects of their lives, is a matter of core human rights. The UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, the CRPD, captures this in the principles of Article 3, full and effective participation and inclusion in society and equality of opportunity. And Article 9, commits state parties to take appropriate measures to ensure persons with disabilities have access on an equal basis with others in all aspects of life. This is echoed in the language of India's own important Rights of Persons with Disabilities Act, which ensures persons with disabilities have the right to a life of equality, dignity, and respect with fully equal legal capacities. This day is also about achieving our collective well-being as we all benefit when people with Down syndrome face no barriers in bringing their full potential, capabilities, skills, and energy to communities. Therefore, this year we are focusing attention on ensuring that people with Down syndrome are empowered to make their own decisions in line with Article 12 of the UN CRPD with autonomy and dignity. This year's theme, with us, not for us, highlights the importance of a rights-based approach to disability, putting behind the outdated model that saw people with disability as objects of parity, only relying on others for support, not the sources of amazing inspiration and capability that they are. Importantly, this requires space for the strong voice of persons with Down syndrome and other disabilities to co-design solutions, to empower themselves and all of us at the same time. And that is why it's so important that organizations like the Down Syndrome Federation of India and members of the community, people living with Down Syndrome and their families, have a leading seat at the table, driving policy and investment decisions. Friends, today is not about disability but about celebrating human uniqueness and diversity of ability. And as the human chromosome resembles a pair of socks, wearing different socks to celebrate human diversity has become a symbol of the World Down Syndrome Day. I encourage all to join the sock challenge and wear different socks as I proudly am. On this World Down Syndrome Day, like every day, let us all recommit to working together for a just and inclusive world, leaving no one behind. Sate do samba hai. Bahat dhanyabad. Now, as he mentioned, it is with us and not for us. We would like our brand ambassador, as Rekha Ma'am had stole, uh, spoken about her, Ms. Unnati Surana. Uh, just to give you a brief about Unnati, Unnati is studying in 11th standard in Gujarat uh, in, a, in a typical school. She is a person with Down syndrome, but what defines her is her courage, is her ability to be able to handle any situation as it comes. I warmly welcome Unnati, our brand ambassador, to say a few words. Welcome, Unnati. We are very proud of you. In today's era of information and awareness, we are celebrating for inclusion, 
schools, colleges, workplaces. We deserve a seat at every table. We are as much a part of the society as you are. And today, I am asking for more. We need to be included in the policy making processes. We are grateful that our rights are being talked about. Discussions are happening. But we want more. We want to be a part of the decisions making. We understand that you are working for us. But we would appreciate it if you can work with us. Article 29 of the UNCRPD states our rights to participate in political and public life without discrimination. Come on, everyone. This world down syndrome today. Let's pledge to make this happen. Don't just believe in our abilities. Trust us with the responsibility that we can make our choices as families, communities, societies, countries. Please know that we can think choose and that our opinions matter just a reminder we belong thank you thank you unnati for another powerful speech thank you so much thank you unnati uh, don't you all think she deserves a huge round of applause i'm sure all of us are applauding her sitting in our own uh, seats. So, Unnati, hats off to you. Yes, you belong. There is no way anybody can take that from you. Right? So, after this speech, uh, we now move on to the speech by our experts. Today, we have four experts with us. Uh, Dr. Suresh, who is from Chennai and who, we, who will be speaking about genetics. We have Dr. Nina Vaidya, from Navsari, Gujarat, and she would be speaking to us about uh, children with Down syndrome. And uh, then we have with us uh, Dr. Nikunj Shah, who is an ophthalmologist from Mumbai. And we have uh, Dr. Smita Mishra. Dr. Smita Mishra was supposed to be here, but because she had uh, an emergency surgery that came up just before this meeting, she could not be here, but she has sent us a recorded message that we will be playing. But before all of this, our host, uh, RCI, uh, Mr. Sandeep Tambe, would be giving us some, of, uh, some instructions regarding uh, the uh, speeches from our experts. So over to you, Mr. Tambe. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, welcome all participants and all uh, dignitaries. Uh, this is the first time that we are uh, initiating this uh, WebEx with a slide option where we have uh, participants who can directly uh, answer the query questions which are raised by the party uh, by the speakers we already have questions those are in mcq form with uh, four options you have to select a single option the, now uh, when we start this you'll get an option of uh, join slido do uh, all participants are requested to join slido after joining Slido, you will, uh, whenever the uh, speaker speaks uh, about the, uh, gives the presentation, end of the presentation, you will get four questions. Each question will have 20 seconds. Within 20 seconds, you have to opt one of the correct answer. After the question is completed, you will get the correct answer. What was the correct answer? And then the second question pops up. You will get four total questions. After all the four questions, you will have the scores. Whoever uh, who are, are registered with RCI, if the question, uh, if the answers uh, correct, uh, correctly given are at 75% above, you will get uh, CRE points for that. So uh, whenever you get an option of Slido, 
please opt for it join the slido thank you thank you brinda ma'am over to you thank you mr tambe uh, so i hope the instructions are clear we get four questions at the end of every specialist's uh, 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 presentation you answer the questions each question 20 seconds and you get the cre points on uh, 75% getting 75% and above of the answers right yes yeah, so now we move on to the presentations by our experts i first invite dr suresh so i'll just give you a small introduction about dr suresh dr suresh is a pioneer in the field of diagnostic ultrasound and in screening programs in association with the government uh, he is the he was the first to provide fetal medicine services in the countries and he, they have been providing it uh, he along with his wife uh, dr indrani have been providing it since 1987 uh, he is also a very important position as far as dsfi is concerned he is the chair of our medical committee and our go to person for any any program that we do so without much ado i hand over the mic to dr suresh over to you sir thank you thank you uh, brinda are you able to see my slide yes sir we are able to see your slide okay good morning all it's an absolute pleasure meeting all of you and uh, thank you for inviting me today i'll just take you something about uh, some essentials about down syndrome uh, we know that the medical name for down syndrome is trisomy 21 uh, it was named after john lagdon down who identified certain features in children who came to his clinic and then uh, it, later on it was found out it was trisomy 21 and then uh, the name was given now if you ask the question what is down syndrome there is one extra chromosome that comes from one parent the total number changes to 47 normally we have 46 and the total number changes to 47 so instead of uh, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and on the 21st chromosome you will get an additional chromosome now how does it occur we call this as a process of meiosis normally what happens is during conception the 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 female has got an egg and the male has a sperm both of them have uh, they 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 have uh, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes but one pair they divided into two 23 from each is supposed to come uh, to the uh, child so one pair of the chromosome from each parent comes when one of the parents instead of 23 transmit 24 chromosomes then we call this as trisomy 21 next is there are four types of down syndrome the the types of down syndrome which we need to know is the 95% of down syndrome is what we call as non disjunction this is uh, true for 95% here what happens is it's a chance occurrence it is not inherited the recurrence risks are very low and only the karyotype of the child can identify this type of down syndrome then uh, we also have uh, what is known as the translocation type of down syndrome which happens in about 4% and here what happens is in the parents uh, one of them have a small rearrangement that is the portion of one chromosome let us say 14th chromosome breaks off and goes itself attaches itself to the 21st chromosome and uh, similarly the um, portion from the 21st chromosome goes and attaches to the uh, 14th so when you have a translocation type of down syndrome what happens is when the transmission occurs uh, the uh, the the pair which already has uh, an extra uh, material from 21 that is also transmitted so that becomes a little extra and that this is what we call as translocation type of down syndrome now this type of down syndrome is inherited the recurrence risk is there so we need to identify that is why when we karyotype the uh, um, children with down syndrome we uh, in some if it is identified as translocation then we can uh, karyotype the parents also so parents are uh, one of the parents is expected to be a carrier 
and uh, this results in translocation type of Down syndrome. Next is, sorry. So what are the uh, implications? Down syndrome we all know is a condition and not a disease. There are specific uh, external features and uh, the upward slanting eyes, uh, a little bit of um, uh, the depressed nasal bridge. Uh, and then when you look at the important thing we need to know is heart defects in 50% of them. Hypothyroidism is, uh, is very common. Hearing loss can occur. Eye refractive errors and cataract can occur. Celiac disease, that is intestinal disease can occur. And there's increased risk of leukemia. But what is important to know is as soon as a child with Down syndrome is born, they need to be examined medically to ensure all these conditions are not there. Because if you identify these conditions early, then effective treatment can be given and they can definitely have a much better way of moving forward. Now, okay, we can identify Down syndrome in pregnancy. It's very important to understand over 70% of Down syndrome will be born to women who are below 35 years of age. And as the maternal age increases, there is a higher chance of having Down syndrome. We call this as probability of having a baby with Down syndrome, right? So next is what we do. Uh, it's also important to understand 99% uh, of people with Down syndrome report being very content with their lives. And 79% of parents state that their outlook on life is more positive since the arrival of their child. So it's a very special thing when a child with Down syndrome comes, uh, the whole family undergoes a transformation uh, in, in many ways. And when, because these children are very happy children and uh, they, they are always um, welcoming of others and the, it's an absolute pleasure to interact with them all the time. Right. Now life expectancy for people with Down syndrome has also increased dramatically for, from about 25 in 1983 to more than 60 years today. So the screening test for Down syndrome when somebody is pregnant, we can identify um, a person who's maybe at risk for uh, Down syndrome by adding some screening tests. These screening tests, we do ultrasound and we do some blood tests in the mother to identify certain, uh, certain chemicals like free beta, uh, HCG and pregnancy associated plasma protein A. And this will filter people who say these papers are a higher probability of having Down syndrome and further tests are done to identify yes or no. When you do, so the, the sequence comes like this. There is a maternal age, then we uh, identify markers. There is a software which takes in all this and uh, there's an algorithm which calculates the probability. We choose the screening model which whichever you want to use. You put in as many filters you want as possible and then you modify the probability and you identify patients for invasive testing. Uh, the time done is between 11 weeks and 13 weeks, 6 days, the first trimester. This is better to do rather than the second trimester because it has got 85 to 90 percent sensitivity. So this is called as the combined test and the combined test has got a 90 percent sensitivity for detection. Then this just to give you an example, when a, when a report of a baby uh, person, pregnant woman who has undergone a screening test has come, her age risk or age probability is 1 in 1,283 and the probability for Down syndrome is 1 in 415. Any cutoff which is uh, below 1 in 250, we call it as, uh, we, we call it as um, low probability and if it says, it is more than 1 in 250, then we call it as high probability. Here it is 1 in 74 is high probability. These patients will do additional testing to identify whether Down syndrome is there or not there. But one of the new things that has come is called NIPT. It is the most sensitive cleaning screening test. It's a blood test done for the mother because the baby's DNA, we call it a cell-free DNA, it comes into the maternal circulation and we can identify that and count the amount of DNA that is there and say 
the chances for having Down syndrome is there or not there. It is 99.9% .9 sensitive, but in about 5%, you may not get a result. It is expensive, but it's becoming more and more affordable. So some FAQs before I close. Are screening tests compulsory? Tests are offered by the doctor. Screening is always a choice made by the couple. What if my doctor does not tell me about the test? You can ask your doctor about available testing. Medical consultation is a two-way process. If you, you, are, you are aware of this and you want to go through screening, you can ask for the screening. What should I know when a screening test is negative? A screen negative test indicates the probability of baby having Down syndrome is less and the less than the prescribed cutoff. It does not say yes or no. If the screening test is positive, does it mean the baby is having Down syndrome? Definitely no. A positive screening test indicates higher probability of the baby having Down syndrome. The baby may still be normal. Then how can I be sure? The only way to be absolutely sure the baby has Down syndrome or not is by direct testing. We put in a needle to take some fluid uh, or the chorionic villus or the placenta tissue from the placenta and send it for chromosomal studies. So this is a representative sample which we take. So this is called as chorion villus sampling. We put in a needle into the placenta between 11 to 14 weeks and the result will come. Amniocentesis is done after 15 weeks and it is removing some fluid and then we do what is called as a FISH or a QFPCR test where the result will be available in about four days time. This is a typical karyotype of a baby with Down syndrome. Here you can see uh, every pair chromosome, every chromosome has got a pair and in the 21st chromosome there is an additional chromosome. This is our three chromosomes there. right? And this is called as a translocation, 21-21 translocation. What has happened is a portion of the 21 chromosome has got himself, uh, got uh, implanted into the other chromosome. So when this is all, so this is already two, uh, two chromosomes here, two 21s are here and this is the third 21. So when if uh, this baby is called as a 21-21 translocation, this what it means is if a parent has a translocation, is a translocation carrier of 21-21, then every pregnancy there will be a Down syndrome. So then why can't we do invasive testing for all patients? Only 5% of the population will be screened positive. Invasive testing has a very small chance of miscarriage. In 0.5 to 1%, there may be a culture failure and repeat testing may have to be done. And direct testing is done if structural anomaly is identified on ultrasound uh, there. So my first baby has Down syndrome. What should I do now? We must know what type of Down syndrome should the parents be tested and what to do for future pregnancies. And the support groups are always there to extend the help. So with, if, if there's a child with Down syndrome, if it's numerical, that's the number, the recurrence is low and indirect or direct testing can be done in subsequent pregnancy. If there's a, a structural abnormality like a translocation, then we do parental karyotype. If parent is carrier, the recurrence is higher. And if the parent is normal, then the recurrence is lower. So <clears throat> balanced carrier uh, uh, and if, uh, or the, it becomes an unbalanced carrier. So you ask for genetic counseling and go by their advice. Other points, if you are considering in vitro fertilization or a pre-implantation genetic diagnosis can be done for Down syndrome before the embryo is implanted. Learning early in your pregnancy that a baby has Down syndrome allows you to better prepare for it. In summary, Down syndrome is a condition and not a disease with an extra chromosome. Recurrence is higher if there are structural rearrangements in chromosomes. Prenatal testing is an option. Counseling by an expert will help understand the available options. And this we call as informed choice. Everybody must understand what it is, maybe interact with the if possible, interact with a, with a child with Down syndrome and then you will feel uh, what you would like to do in this pregnancy. Thank you. Children with Down syndrome are truly adorable. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. We celebrate a day for them. We should also celebrate their achievements. Uh, uh, I've seen them speak on uh, podiums, uh, play musical instruments, perform dance performances. They're absolutely adorable children. They teach us actually how to live. And that's what is very important. Thank you very much for this opportunity.
Sir, uh, before we uh, start the slide or the next session, I would request you to once again give instructions because I see a lot of doubts coming in the chat box. I'm sure you'd have seen it too. Uh, so we move on without much ado. Uh, and our next speaker is a mother and a pioneer of sorts. She has started inclusive play, inclusive festivals, inclusive cultural programs, and even inclusive picnics which means she is the pioneer of inclusion in our country. What say Nina, ma'am? One of the uh, doctors to, uh, she was one of the doctors who was responsible for creating the leaflet on Down syndrome for doctors, which has been circulated across the country through IAP. She has enough awards to fill her cupboards and still receiving more. But as she puts it in her, Words. Her biggest awards are the smiles of the mothers and when they see how their children are developing and growing under uh, Nina Ma'am's care. So yes, without much ado, over to you Nina Ma'am for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Brinda. I hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So hello everyone and uh, thank you Rekhama for always being there. Thanks to Team RCI for organizing such a meaningful and powerful session on 21-3. Thousand people listening and understanding and answering about Down syndrome is something great. I must appreciate. Down syndrome, as we all know, is a chromosomal anomaly and it is a condition uh, and not a disease. But there are some medical anomalies associated with Down syndrome. We have experts, Dr. Smita Mishra for cardiac anomalies and Dr. Nikunj for eye-related issues to guide us. So I will not talk about uh, cardiac uh, anomalies related to cardiac and uh, eyes. Uh, coming to gastrointestinal defects, Congenital defects related to patency of intestine, which may need surgical intervention. Uh, other anomalies like reflux, celiac disease, or constipation can be managed by modification in diet and uh, sitting, sleeping postures. Sometimes the child may need uh, certain medicines. Karyotyping has been beautifully explained by Dr. Suresh. So I will not go into the detail of that, but I will talk about the typical features uh, the child with Down syndrome uh, shows. Uh, persons with Down syndrome have small nose, small low set ears, flat occiput, slanting eyes, short stretcher, single palmar crease, short neck, high ass palate, protruding tongue, etc. Persons with Down syndrome have a short narrow ear canal, which <clears throat> make them prone for repeated ear infections and fluid collection, resulting in conductive hearing loss. There can be congenital hearing defects also. The child should be checked by an ENT expert and should undergo para. The checkup should be done every six months initially and then every year even if it is found normal this is very important even if you found it find it normal then also every year uh, year checkup should be done I Nina, I'm sorry function. one minute there is a uh, there are requests that your voice is not clear so could you just probably hello uh, we can clear? hear you but some of them and you they also want some of them want a little bit of hindi so Okay. Little bit, ma'am, because there are participants from all over. I'm repeating everything in English and Hindi both, but uh, time is a concern. Right, right, ma'am. You can continue. Just that, okay. ma'am, uh, anyway, uh, they, some of them are saying your voice is not clear, so just that one point. Okay, now is it clear? Yeah, ma'am, for me it is clear. I hope it is clear for everyone. Okay, because my connection shows full, full signal. Right, ma'am. Okay, should I repeat the last part or should I go ahead with thyroid malfunctions? No, no, ma'am, please continue. Okay, so thyroid malfunction is common with Down syndrome. Uh, the baby should be screened at birth at six months and then every year thereafter. 
and endo endocrinologist should be consulted for further treatment. The compromised immune system of persons with Down syndrome leads to frequent cough and cold and are at increased risk of infectious diseases like pneumonia. Yearly checkup of blood parameters should be done on regular basis. The primary vaccination schedule should be followed. Diet rich in omega-3 and 6 fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, essential amino acids, fibers can help to boost the immunity. Narrow, short and thinned air passages starting from nose, uh, going to trachea and further below, they are different. Anatomically, it is different. It is narrow, short and thinned. Then the muscle tone is low. Uh, usually, persons with Down syndrome are obese. Or all together put them at a higher risk of obstructive sleep apnea. The alarming signs are restlessness during night hours, irritability and sleepiness during daytime, inability to focus, not interested even in favorite activities, sluggishness, etc. A sleep apnea test should be done. Change in posture, reducing weight, tonsillectomy, removal of adenoids, or CPAP will help. As I told, persons with Down syndrome are usually obese, so exercise and diet modification is the remedy. Coming to spinal problems, an orthopedic surgeon should be consulted once the child crosses three years of age to check the atlantoaxial instability, which if ignored can lead to serious injury to spinal cord. Children with Down syndrome have flat foot, which should be corrected as soon as the child is able to stand erect without support to avoid premature degeneration of joints and abnormal feet. Delayed dentition, overcrowding of teeth, misaligned teeth are the common dental issues. Very early and regular dental checkups are mandatory. Untreated dental issues can result in behavioral issues and speech-related issues. There are some other problems like leukemia, dementia, Alzheimer's, seizures, etc. But I am most concerned about the very high percentage of the young adults with Down syndrome going into depression. We all, the medics, paramedics, therapists, educators, Parents, everyone, regardless of the class, profession, gender, our life goals, we all don't believe that prevention is better than cure. This much high percentage of our young adults going into depression is the gift of ignorance. It's because of the lack of awareness. It's because our children are invisible. It is because of the lack of infrastructure. It is because of the lack of inclusion. They do not have friends. They do not have social circles. They do not have vocational training centers, life skills training centers, job opportunities, acceptance, nothing. And so they gradually slip into isolation, which eventually results into depression. It is the collective responsibility of all of us including doctors to focus on the preventive aspect of persons with Down syndrome going into depression. The preventive measure should start right from the birth of the child. The treating doctor should guide the parents about the early intervention program, which can be started immediately after birth, maybe at an age of one to two months, if the baby is not having any associated abnormality, which needs immediate attention and treatment. Otherwise, the early intervention program can be started once the child is medically fit. With better acceptance, inclusive schools, appropriate training centers, we will be able to create a better world for them and prevent them from sleeping into depression. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Nina, ma'am, for that crisp and interesting talk. It was easy to understand and it was brief and to the point. So thank you very much for that talk. I am sure our participants would have understood most of it. So um, without much ado, I think Slido has to do its job. Mr. Tambe would take over for the Slido. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we're starting for, with the Slido. I already mentioned uh, those who are joined from uh, desktop or laptop went uh, off for Slido. Uh, Launch it, sir. Rukaji, launch it. Because also, I have also joined from my mobile and uh, open the uh, option that you have received. I'll say I want to open Slido in the meeting. Please open. Yes, good. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. 150, 200. So 700 participants have joined and we're starting the question. The first question comes up. Over to you, Bhirinda ma'am. Yeah, we're thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, so we have our next speaker. He's an ophthalmologist, uh, Dr. Nikun Shah. Warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much for being a part of this event. Uh, just a brief about Dr. Shah. He's a topper. He has been a topper throughout, uh, whether it was his MBBS or uh, his uh, uh, next studies. And he's one of the finest ophthalmologists in the country. Parents swear by him because they feel that the children are so comfortable with Dr. Shah that they don't cry when they go to him. So that I think, sir, is a great achievement. He's the founder and director of Eye Super Specialities in uh, Mumbai. And uh, thank you, sir, for being a part of this esteemed channel. We even had Dr. Shah run a medical camp for us uh, this year in Mumbai in the month of January. Uh, thank you, sir, for being here. And I hand over the mic to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so today, uh, I'll, uh, I'll first of all like to thank the Down Syndrome Federation of India to have been, uh, you know, for making me a part of this wonderful campaign. And I am really privileged to be here. Uh, as I've understood, uh, uh, should I make my uh, talk as, as a mixture of English and Hindi for uh, for the convenience of everyone? Yes, sir. That would be preferable, I yeah, think. So Many people are asking to... for Hindi. So I'll try also. my best to keep it simple uh, in a language they can understand. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Okay. I'll start with my slideshow. Uh, sir, Just, Hindi uh, and English, please, sir, because some no, I will, I will, I'll are from here. the south, so they might have a problem, sir. I have I know certain South Indian languages, but it's, <laughs> it's not the right time to try out and confuse them. Fine. No, sir. So Thank uh, you, sir. today, yeah. Can you see my slides, ma'am? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, what I'm going to mention from it, all things, I will be discussing only the key issues today. So, I will discuss the main points or the common bimariyoke barame aj baat karunga. Uh, so, what we know is that medical science has advanced and hence the death rate of a newborn child had reduced. Similarly, as a parallel, the life expectancy of a Down syndrome child has increased from almost 25 years in 1983 to 60 years now. And hence, we need to really work on uh, your, their medical care to make their lives better, to improve their quality of life as well as their vision so that they become uh, better participating citizens and, and they would also enjoy their stay in the community. Uh, I has a very important role in the overall development. So, Akho आंखों की नजर अगर दृष्टि कम होती है तो बाकी जो सारी सेंसेस uh, है बॉडी की वो डेवलप नहीं होती है जैसे हमारा सारा लर्निंग आवर होल एजुकेशन रिक्वायर्स 80% परसेंट यू नो पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ द विजन हमने देखा है कि जो चिल्ड्रन स्कूल uh, में uh, अच्छा नहीं करते हैं उनमें मोस्ट ऑफ द चिल्ड्रन 60% को आंखों के प्रॉब्लम की वजह से प्रॉब्लम होता है क्योंकि आंखें सिर्फ देखती नहीं है और सारी सेंसेस जैसे हैंड आई कोऑर्डिनेशन 
जैसे डेफ्थ परसेप्शन किसी भी चीज़ को की दूरी नापना या जो भी फाइनर फंक्शंस होते हैं ब्रेन के वो आंखों से संबंधित होते हैं दे आर रिलेटेड टू योर आई साइट सो आई इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिफोर प्रोसीडिंग वी नीड टू नो दैट जो डाउन्स चिल्ड्रन होते हैं उनकी जो शेड्यूल होती है वो बिल्कुल बर्थ से शुरू होती है क्योंकि जितना जल्दी हम ये प्रॉब्लम्स डिटेक्ट करते हैं उतना हम जल्दी उनको हेल्प कर सकते हैं अगर वो लेट हो जाते हो तो काफ़ी सारी बीमारियाँ हाथ के बाहर चली जाती है सो इट स्टार्ट एट बर्थ सिक्स मंथ्स वन ईयर एंड देन एवरी ईयर ऑफ योर लाइफ हर साल एक बार ईयरली एनुअल एग्जामिनेशन आंखों का करना बहुत जरूरी है इसके पहले हमको जानना है कि आंख एक कैमरे की तरह बनी है जैसे लाइट रेज अंदर जाती है और पीछे की फिल्म पर्दे पे हमको तस्वीर दिखाती है सिमिलरली अवर आई हैज फोकस इज द लाइट ऑन द बैक पोर्शन कॉल्ड एज रेटिना और रेटिना से जो लाइट निकलती है इट गोज टू द ब्रेन और ब्रेन फॉर्म्स अ विजुअल इमेज दैट इज हाउ अन आई सीज इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू नो इट्स फंक्शन ताकि हम उस आंखों के प्रॉब्लम्स समझ सके सो सबसे कॉमन प्रॉब्लम इज टू हैव स्पेक्टेकल नंबर्स जैसे प्लस नंबर हो माइनस नंबर हो वो कैसे होता है तो जैसे आप लेफ्ट टॉप कॉर्नर पे देख सकते हो कि जिसकी आंखें छोटी होती है द आईज विच आर स्मॉल द रेज ऑफ लाइट फोकस बिहाइंड द रेटिना तो उनको फार का दूर का अच्छा दिखता है नजदीक का खराब दिखता है तो उसको फार साइटेडनेस बोलते हैं सेकेंड जो स्क्रीन पे है पिक्चर ऊपर जिसमें माइनस नंबर वाले पेशेंट जहां तस्वीर पर्दे के आगे गिरती है उनको नजदीक की नजर अच्छी होती है जैसे आप देख सकते हो ये पिक्चर में बॉल्स द बॉल्स आर सीन बेटर एंड द स्लाइड इज ब्लर्ड और तीसरे तरह का जो प्रॉब्लम है जिसमें उसको एस्टिगमेटिज्म बोलते हैं उसमें अंदर जो राइट लाइट के रेज दीज आर नॉट फोकसिंग पैरल ऑन द रेटिना दे आर फॉर फॉर्मिंग मल्टीपल पॉइंट ऑफ फोकस ओवर हीयर उससे क्या होता है कि पूरी इमेज ब्लर हो जाती है ये तीन तरह के प्रॉब्लम है प्लस नंबर माइनस नंबर और एस्टिग्मेटिज्म तीनों के प्रॉब्लम का जो सॉल्यूशन है इस सॉल्यूशन चश्मे के नंबर से होता है सो so, जो ग्लास नंबर्स है तो जिसको दूर का कम दिखता है उनको माइनस नंबर्स लगते हैं जिसको नजदीक का कम दिखता है उसको प्लस नंबर्स लगते हैं तो इस तरह के ग्लासेस से मोस्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट्स को अच्छा होता है लेकिन यूजुअली डाउन सिंड्रोम के जो चिल्ड्रन है वो डॉक्टर्स के पास जल्दी जाते नहीं है अपनी कंप्लेन्स बताते नहीं है इसलिए काफी लोगों को एक प्रॉब्लम होता है उसको बोलते हैं लेजी आई लेजी आई इज अचुएशन वेर वन आई सी क्लियरली आर यू एबल टू हियर देर इज अर इज अ क्वेश्चन सिंग नो ऑडियो एम आई ऑडिबल so you are audible could you be a little louder is what i think people are asking i can hear oh, you but should i should i go back again and come forth or should i continue no sir please continue because yeah. i think yeah. you also have yeah. to so what i was talking about the glass number part is that the people who reach late uh, in their life usme kya ho jata hai one of the eyes stops seeing clearly and that becomes a lazy eye और फिर उसका ट्रीटमेंट कुछ अलग से करना पड़ता है उसमें चश्मे के नंबर लगते ही है विद ग्लासेस यू रिक्वायर व्हाट इज कॉल्ड ओक्लूजन वी पुट सच काइंड ऑफ अ टेप ओवर द फेस ऑफ द चाइल्ड सो दैट वन आई इज ब्लॉक एंड द अदर आई कैन सी और वी कैन मेक देम डू एक्सरसाइज ऑन अ मशीन ओवर हियर कॉल्ड एज अक्टोफोर एंड इन मॉडर्न टाइम्स वी हैव गॉट अ डिजिटल अ गेम लाइक सिचुएशन विच चिल्ड्रन लाइक टू प्ले वेर इन विजन थेरेपी या इज गिवन अलॉन्ग विथ एंड विथ विच द लेजी आई इज एक्टिवेटेड अगेन The second problem that we find in Down's children is a problem with eye movements. So what we see over here, the eye moves up, down, right, left, or it rotates with the help of these strings or muscles which are attached to the eye. इसमें कोई भी एक muscle में problem हुआ तो आंखें टेढ़ी हो जाती है. टेढ़ी आंख मतलब के squint eyes. तो first photograph में देख रहे हैं कि आंखें अंदर की तरफ है. Second photograph में है आंखें बाहर की तरफ है. Almost 50 to 60 percent children जो होते हैं Down's के All of them can have. Uh, it's a it's a very common problem to deal with. Uh, also, also they would have a shaky eye. Shaky eye means यहाँ आपको दिख रहा है कि the eye is constantly moving. It is not able to fix on one object. Or they have what is called as loss of focus. तो एक भी image उनको एक second में ही blur हो जाती है और उनको वो focus maintain करना difficult होता है. ये सारे problems भी Down's baby में होते हैं. So इसमें काफी सारे problems जिसमें ये अंदर जाने वाली आँखों को inner going eyes we have treated only with glasses these are simple glasses on the right side you can see a specialized glass called as a bifocal glass given to the children and you see amazingly the squinting eyes are totally straight only with glass numbers but sometimes in the middle picture you can see we have to do a squint surgery where we reattach the muscles the loose muscles are tightened and the tightened muscles are loosened so kafi logo ko surgery bhi lagti hai squint correction mein 
तो डाउन्स बेबी का ये पिक्चर है बहुत कॉमनली उनके जो चेहरे होते हैं वो उनके फेस से आइडेंटिफाई होते हैं तो लॉट ऑफ फेशियल फीचर्स दैट वी सी इन डाउन्स बेबी आर आइडेंटिफाइबल हियर यू फील दैट द चाइल्ड हैज अ स्क्विंट बट द चाइल्ड डजेंट हैव अ स्क्विंट बिकॉज द नोज इज फ्लैट एंड देर इज अ फोल्ड ऑफ स्किन ओवर हियर यू फील दैट द आई इज क्विंटिंग इन सच पेशेंट हम सिर्फ ये आंखों के लिड्स आई लिड्स आर जस्ट पुल्ड अप बाई सर्जरी एंड यू फील दैट द स्क्विंट इज गॉन सो एक्चुअली स्क्विंट नहीं था दिस वॉज नॉट अ स्क्विंट it was a false squint which we corrected just with a cosmetic surgery cornea so cornea is the front portion of the eye which is a transparent glass like portion through which the rays of light pass inside the eye and they focus on the retina to form a image over here so from the side if you see the cornea is like a very perfect shape however in downs children around 20% of the patients especially because of their habit to rub their eyes again and again because they get frequent eye infections and allergies so they keep on rubbing because of rubbing if you see the normal curvature which is seen over here changes into an abnormal shape so here in the photograph you see a crystal clear cornea jo ekdam smooth hai aur yahan aap dekhoge to uska shape change ho gaya hai to ye shape change hone ki wajah se kya hota hai ki jab wo dekhte hai to the image that they are seeing on the left is a normal image On the right you see the image which is through such a distorted cornea. उसके लिए एक स्पेशल टेस्ट होती है इट्स कॉल्ड ऑक्यूलाइजर विच यू सी रेड रेड फ्लैग ओवर हियर विच डिटेक्ट द प्रॉब्लम द प्रॉब्लम इज कॉल्ड कैरेटोकोनस समटाइम्स ये जो कोन है इसको जो शेप अपना एकदम रेगुलर होता है वो एक कोन की तरह हो जाता है तो उसको ट्रीटमेंट करने के लिए हम एक स्पेशलाइज अल्ट्रावायलेट लाइट देके वो शेप को करेक्ट कर सकते हैं या एक स्पेशलाइज कॉन्टेक्ट लेंस आती है जो आंखों के ऊपर बिठा देते हैं वी कैन फिट अ कॉन्टेक्ट लेंस ऑन द आई और वी कैन डू अ लेजर टू करेक्ट दिस शेप ऑफ द कॉर्निया हावे वर वेन एवर इट प्रोग्रेस इज फर्दर कॉर्निया में स्कार हो जाता है यू कैन सी अ वाइट स्पॉट और उसको हमको डोनेशन वाली जो आंखें आती है डोनेटेड कॉर्निया we have to replace the no, the diseased cornea and we have to put a graft yahan aapko ek graft dikh raha hai jo stitches se aapko ke upar lagaya hua hai through which the child can start seeing again cataract cataract matlab moti bindu or it's like a uh, a spot inside the eye which does not allow of the light to pass so if you see this child you can from that through the eyes you cannot see anything and you can, you are seeing an opaque structure a white structure from outside when you see under our machine we can see a cloudy lens natural lens is like glass but a cloudy lens looks like this see the pictures and as it increases it becomes dense and dense so jab wo kadak ho jata hai it becomes dense it doesn't allow the light to pass or fir image formation nahi hota hai so whenever the patient sees ye left side normal image hai right is the image through a cataract the image is blurred also when they go in the sun they are not able to open the eyes they find a lot of glare so cataract removal will cause the vision to improve as well as all the complaints also can go away so you see how we remove the cataract is the with the help of this probe it's called an ultrasound probe or a phaco emulsification probe with which we are removing the cataract in pieces then we insert a lens in the right top corner inside the eye and in this picture the lens is seen beautifully sitting in the position of the natural lens through which now the child starts seeing again because the opaque lens is replaced by a transparent and very clean lens and the vision is regained back by just a very short procedure which takes 15 20 minutes so i would just like to conclude that down syndrome is associated with lot of problems which threaten not only the vision of the child but the overall development of the child is uh, affected and the intellectual disability of the child is also affected by the vision sense that is why it is very important to see the children very regularly very early in life and also to treat them on time and not forgetting to follow them up for throughout their life the care and support that as a family or as a community that we we give to such children whose quality of life is going to improve over the next decade with the advance in sciences uh, we should play a very important role as eye surgeons in it and we should help such children to lead an absolutely normal and independent life because they are very skillful very loving children and i hope you know we should make all the efforts to give them a place in the society so so my last slide would speak all so it's neither down it's it's these children are neither down nor out they are there to stay and they are there to excel in life thank you so much for your patient hearing thank you very much sir for that simple uncomplicated presentation i 
can be a very difficult topic, frankly, for all of us as parents or even as uh, lay people. But you've made it so simple for us. I think even a lay person like uh, me understood a bit of what you said. So thank you very much, sir. And uh, as usual, we'll move on to the question session. Uh, over to you, uh, Tambe, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We're starting with this. Open the slide. Join yourself. Nikun, sir, you've received a lot of compliments for the presentation, sir, on the chat messages. So thank you very much. So I am privileged and uh, if 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 time permits later on also because this was a very short time that we had and understood the constraints but yes. we can make it simpler and better to understand sure so we'll definitely invite you for a session for our parents thank you so in the moment, we are also looking forward that we will be having more sessions this kind of sessions with all the experts definitely sir we are also looking forward to it the more the people who join the more they know down syndrome the better for all of us sir so i really am looking forward to it this is only the first step that we are taking but now that this will be extended to one hour or two hour session sort of like and we surely can do this we'll be sure yes, sir, definitely we should do it sir we'll definitely do it another eight and we'll be starting the questions up at 700. Over to you, Brinda, ma'am. We're done with it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tambe. Now we move on to the last expert speaker. Uh, she is a pediatric cardiologist, and we are going to discuss heart issues. And as I mentioned in the beginning, she had gone for a surgery. She was not able to uh, get out of it. She's still in surgery. But she has sent us her presentation, which I will be sharing now. So uh, I'll just introduce uh, Dr. Smita Mishra. She's a pediatric cardiologist with Manipal Hospital in Delhi. And under her able guidance, a free medical camp was organized at uh, Manipal Hospital on the 19th of March, which is this Sunday, to celebrate World Down Syndrome Day. Uh, she's also an executive board member of IAP from 2015 to 2018 and was the past secretary of the Indian Academy of, of Pediatrics. Uh, she has been a faculty in various seminars across the country and has deservedly won the Best Doctor Award from IMA Delhi in 2013. Now, I'll, uh, she is also the secretary of a charitable institution, uh, which is for children with special needs. I now uh, move over to her presentation, which I will be sharing with you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, uh, Down Syndrome, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm apologizing for uh, sending this uh, uh, this recording because uh, uh, direct live uh, uh, appearance was not possible due to some emergency in the cat lab. So thank you so much. <clears throat> so uh, in Down Syndrome, the cardiac issues are uh, many. And uh, we need to know what are those and how to manage them. So uh, there is continuous effort, not strength or intelligence is the key to uh, open our potential. So this is very important that we have to do continuous effort to get the best result like in this particular baby who presented with AVST and subsequently mother, I kept on talking to her, she was depressed. Then subsequently, uh, she understood. She started communicating with other parents, DSPS uh, um, uh, Society in Delhi. And then now she is happy and baby is growing so well. Uh, diagnosis of the uh, Down syndrome, we know about that. We know that they are born with the difference. They have cute features, have their own pace and way of walking on the path of life. They have a special smile, friendliness, kind of back venture, laid back attitude, more beautiful and music lover. They lead you towards better human qualities. They make you better teacher and listener. So there are multiple uh, cardiac queries in your brain as a parents that uh, now, cardiac examination, first it should be done or not. Should I go for echocardiography? 
if baby is turning blue, how to interpret that? Uh, may uh, these heart defects can they heal on its own? Can they be treated with oral medication, homeopathy, or Ayurveda? Can these defects be cured with the intervention? Uh, so there are multiple questions, and I must say that any other uh, child with the congenital heart disease. Issues remain same, like a small ASD, small VSD, a muscular VSD will close on its own, but a atrioventricular septal defect and VSD will never close on its own. So the uh, all decision regarding the intervention are not to intervene, start to medicine or go for surgery, or just wait and watch, will depend on your physician, pediatric cardiologist. Echocardiography is a must. Whenever baby born with this, these features and uh, diagnosed as a trisomy 21, one should always uh, analyze all the system because any system can be involved and maybe all systems are working fine. So either way, one should definitely try to do that. Then, what is the difference between ASD, VSD? Another question with the atrioventricular septal canal defect. Because in atrioventricular canal defect, there is a ASD, there is a VSD, but there is a valvular issues also. Lung pressure in the Down syndrome, they are important thing because lung formation is such that they may develop high lung pressure even without a heart disease. If someone blew, no, always there is no heart disease defect because upper respiratory airway issues may also call, uh, cause some bluishness. So this is the blood pressure you can see. We all know 100 uh, by 70 or something like that. This is meant for only the system or body. But if you take similarly, lung pressure should not never be like that. It should be one fifth of this, like 25 oblique two. So this is what we talk about the pulmonary arterial hypertension. So mean PA pressure, if it is more than 25, we say primary pulmonary hypertension is there. If there and no underlying heart disease, then we have to go for medication and we have to have a regular follow-up. But if it is with cardiac disease, chances of de decreasing it is uh, really more. But sometimes both may present together, primary pulmonary hypertension and heart. So structural heart, uh, what are the structural heart diseases? Uh, uh, why uh, there is a blueness and why lung pressure are high? So, um, uh, and should they be treated? That is a question why I have taken the more interest in this particular subset of children uh, because they so many times have been advised against the cardiac intervention and that is very, very wrong. They should go for it because they have a then better life expectancy and better chance to be, uh, uh, to have a developmental intervention, which is almost always needed. What are the cardiovascular defects? Are they atrioventricular septal defect, ventricular septal defect? And name a cardiac defect, everything can be there, but commonest is atrioventricular septal defect. It is in 40% of my children identified as a case of Down syndrome, but the Down syndrome, um, atrioventricular septal defect, if you uh, take them, then 60% children may have a Down syndrome. So other way around also, one should actually look for it. Then we are having many uphill tasks like training, space therapy, toilet training. So and definitely cardiac issues should be identified and resolved because they can be resolved mostly. They, uh, and those things I already told you, this is the atrioventricular septal defect. You can see the ASD is a VSD there and the valve is abnormally formed. So this is a normal heart and uh, how this is the atrioventricular septal defect. And uh, if it is there, it is really often present. I said around 40% now all series say so. And uh, the relationship with the trisomy 21 is very strong. So here the three month old baby presented with the con congestive heart failure and also desaturation. But there were other features of heart failure like hepatomegaly and this is the patient. So uh, you can see that and patient was denied surgery uh, for the atrioventricular. Uh, so when this patient should have been operated? So mostly these patients should be operated between two to four months. 
there may be pa bending if complete repair cannot be done it depends on the technical technical issues of the surgeon and the and setup so long term prognosis reoperation for valvular regurgitation may happen that is what but uh, before thing before thinking of uh, isenmangerization in a blue down syndrome baby with the abst one should always look for upper airway issues sometimes it is no bluishness is because of that so and what about the pdasd we know pdasd are the normal no, finding in the for the fetal life because right sided heart receives uh, oxygenated blood from the placenta of mother then subsequently after birth these uh, uh, pda and asd may persist and if pda persists then you have to go for a device closure so what i said before i want to tell you a story of a 14 year old boy who was very very sick severely desaturating having tetralogy of fallow was brought to me and since the age of because i run a program a spandan so i was very surprised that patient was not operated and attendant were very specifically saying me that pediatrician said that it should not be done because the child is having the down syndrome but uh, this was a uh, echo picture you can say vst and the pulmonary stenosis we did surgery and patient recovered very well you can see how Mom and quite he is, and when I asked father, when child was scribbling on the uh, on the page paper, so see, see, this is so he is trying to study it, never did it, and father is so hopeful that now my child will be studying, and this is the important thing. If baby was operated before the surgery, would have done a great wonder because child was normal and may. might have gone to school and have learned the uh, uh, study so uh, uh, recommendations are by 6 week formal heart is assessment in chronic echocardiogram should be done low threshold for cardiac review if signs and symptom appear adolescent onward cardiac evaluation is mandatory and iq scale which is actually a broad scale for a down syndrome baby i think if first of parents are uh, make lot of difference and if early intervention is made this iq can always be achieved at the highest level so um, uh, there are multiple cardiac queries which i actually told you that uh, about the cardiac thing that uh, they are most of the times is salvageable surgery can be done most of the time they may not be this uh, cardiac issues may not be very very uh, complicated so no, you should always look for resolution of them never get pessimistic that why should i go for a surgery because that is the way where you are now going for a better lifestyle for your child in summary the congenital heart disease is major cause of morbidity mortality in down syndrome and also the disability further uh, adding up so early diagnosis and intervention is recommended we must know delayed or denied cardiac intervention may have beating on overall improvement in the de on development so my take as a human being we are toy of circumstances life is so full of accident friends that we can only be humble but not proud of our intactness and born same we have to know asymmetry and difference is a scheme of god to test our vision to test capacity to see far and wide so hurdle race the life is hurdle race for the the children and we have to be support for them thank you so much rekhama and all dfsi thank you and again sorry that i could not join live in this very very important program for me thank you so much uh that was a very nice presentation uh, from smita ma'am and in spite of her busy uh, schedule she still managed to uh, you know come and uh, give us a presentation so i we will definitely send her our thanks uh we are happy to have with us uh, uh the uh, secretary uh, department of empowerment of persons with disability uh, shri rajesh agarwal sir uh sir uh, would like to say a few words uh, and i would like to invite him for the presentation good afternoon everyone 
Good afternoon, sir. I've uh, been able to join just now, and uh, but I got uh, a summary of what was being said, uh, all debated from all my officers. In fact, today we are having a separate workshop on web accessibility also. So uh, I have joined that earlier, and now I'm lucky to join this also. And uh, this is frankly a pilot project from RCI. We will be promoting webinars in a big way. And uh, usually till now, the whole focus has been only professionals who attend such webinars or physical conferences to gain CRE points. But now this is a first pilot in a sense that we involved reputed people, reputed speakers and NGOs. And uh, they also called parents and some children also and other caregivers also apart from our CRR professionals or rehabilitation professionals. So it's quite a mixed group. Also, we are trying to use technology like Slido for the first time so that uh, we have sort of uh, objective type questions in between. And uh, uh, for this, basically only tomorrow we'll be able to issue the CRE points to those CRR professionals, but uh, in future, we will further fine tune it so that on the same day, the CRE points are reflected. So the same we will try to do for physical uh, uh, seminars also, where the questions will be asked on mobiles and uh, so that immediately after the physical conference is over, the CRE points can be sort of pushed into the database. But that is on the technical side. Now on the content part, I was lucky to join two days back a medical health camp in Manipal Hospital, Delhi, organized with Down Syndrome uh, Federation of India. And I was very impressed with the whole passion, but more than passion, also very professional way of uh, scaling it up. We have a lot of uh, passionate people in the field, a lot of passionate parents, uh, but then the knack of involving more people and reaching out, scaling out, and making a big societal impact that very few people can do. So I must uh, congratulate passionate people, but also who have been able to make a huge societal impact. And we would love to basically continue working with uh, such organizations and such people. And uh, I have got a peep into the chats which are happening also. And uh, this tells us that probably we need to tell in advance that majority of the content will be in English in this seminar, or we need to basically do seminars in Hindi also. So, we will try to do some seminars in Punjabi and Telugu. And we will do some mixed group so that parents, caregivers, our professionals, and children, adults, lived experience so that has more impact uh, uh, so uh, there have been a few glitches today so again I am saying it's a pilot slide join karna there is an issue and all that so as ugly do in webinars then my team will also get uh, sort of trained in it and uh, we are issuing revised CRE guidelines in uh, next three, four days. Uh, so they will be quite different from the previous ones. So we are focusing on experiential learning also. So we had physical trainings, we had uh, webinars or seminars, basically conferences. We had webinars. So now experiential training, more lived training, so more immersive training, field visits, uh, that also will be encouraging through those guidelines. So any feedback from today's participants, uh, basically, I guess from the same email from which we got the links, uh, if any participant wants to give feedback to improve our webinars or uh, whatever, so that is most welcome. Uh, and I will stop here and uh, continue listening to speakers and uh, participants. Thank you so much. Over to Thank you, sir. And uh, 
uh, really the initiatives that you're taking uh, definitely is going to help in the long run because the reach is going to be much more. There are a lot more parents, there are a lot more caregivers jinko iski zarurat hai. Or as a initiatives definitely sab ke liye bahut hi fayde mand hoge hamare liye bhi as DSFI I can say. Uh, so with this uh, we conclude. Uh, we've got all our speakers, all yeah. our experts. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, we have this question session left. Uh, shall we do on the heart? The question heart. session. The question, question and answer, sir. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for the heart. On the heart. On the heart. On the heart, you have uh, questions, sir. The thing is that uh, that uh, Smita, ma'am, had to go for a surgery. So that is why she was she was not here. She had sent us a recorded presentation, yeah, sir. Yeah, fine. But the questions can be shoot at least. We already have the question bank with us. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry, oh, yeah. yes, on the Slido. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, all participants are requested to please join Slido. So this is like a surprise. So those who had uh, gone away from the screen, they have to be near the screen all the time. <laughs> the rest <of> missing. <laughs> join Slido. Open and join. To everyone, in future, we will ensure that people get at least seventy percent marks. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good announcement, sir, for everyone. It is encouraging, actually. It is very encouraging, actually. But 600 has run. Once it reaches 700, we start. 600. Within a minute, sir, everyone will start. So we start when we hit 700 Yeah. Given the limit of like, at 700, we start. Okay. After that, you know, people at 700, 700. Okay. I think it's almost, almost saturated. Nice. So now the go counter up. is growing slowly. Ah, so it will go up to 700. Uh, just to begin. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, ma'am. So, shall I continue? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for that. With that, uh, we conclude and uh, for the vote of thanks, I invite our president, Dr. Surekha Ramachandra. Ma'am, over to you for the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to everyone on the, I'm so excited to see over a thousand people just watching this show and uh, learning from today's experts. This was the most important. I cannot understand how we have missed this for so many years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, to Sri Rajesh Agarwal for being so innovative and giving us this platform because it has brought another thousand people to understand what Down syndrome is actually. Because Sir, Down syndrome can go to any family, go to any house and it can happen to across the entire world. There is nothing called caste, creed or race that this happens. It can happen to anyone and we would like to tell you that Having a child with Down syndrome is not considered anymore a difficult situation. It is considered to be a blessing. We want you all to understand that we are here to support each and every parent, each and every person who comes across a child with Down syndrome. We have support groups across the country. DSFI has created that. We can have no language barriers. The next time we can have it in Telugu, in Hindi, whichever language you want, sir. So we can bring in the experts in different languages and we pro promise to be hold your hand right through the next promotion, sir. We want to uh, teach more people about the subject because Down syndrome is the first and most easily identifiable uh, you know, condition at birth or even before the child is born. So we have a large group of people that work together today. Everywhere there is a celebration and we are absolutely excited. We want to thank everyone who came onto this panel. Each one gave their own objective, but it was medical. And I think all, all the people over here have really understood 
that Down syndrome can be handled. We will take it forward. Three cheers to every child with Down syndrome, the parents, the caregivers, and to the private sectors that are actually uh, promoting the issues. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, madam. Uh, uh, before we come to an end of this event, uh, I want to put on record the great big word of thanks for the Down Syndrome Federation of India and uh, all the specialist experts who have joined there, given their presentation, the team of caregivers, the, the parents, children, and uh, most respectfully to the secretary of the department and the chairperson of RCI who have given us this platform and given this opportunity. Uh, on behalf of RCI, I thank each one of you. And we are looking forward for a joint effort uh, to take this cause further. And I wish all of you a very happy Down syndrome day today. Thank you very much. This is Vinit Singhal from Member Secretary from RCI. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think we'll be ending the session with this. So thank you, everyone. So hope to have more such sessions in the future. Bye-bye, everybody, and have a great day.